Hello everybody and welcome to Forever Rugby on Forever Sports for today's Curry Cup Round 5 Team of the Week, a selection of the best players, the standout players at least for us that we thought were um, at the top of the game over the weekend. A couple of players left out and obviously a, a limited pool to choose from because there was no third game, which has started to become a bit of a recurring theme. Um, but obviously there are a lot of questions regarding the tournament. Um, considering the lockdown regulations that have been implemented in South Africa until the 15th of January. However, during the Gazette, it did say that um, sports can continue, um, provided they're sort of low and medium COVID risk. So from the sounds of it, the early reports are that the Curry Cup will keep going ahead and that there will be no issue. That the tournament has not been called off or anything as of yet. But it does look like scheduling will probably have to change because venues have to close by 8 o'clock to allow people to return home by the 9 p.m. curfew, which means that 7 o'clock kickoffs are out. And chances are we're going to probably start seeing at the latest half past 5 kickoffs, probably 5 o'clock kickoffs, in which case, you know, we might start seeing the first game starting at 3. So instead of going half past 4, 7, we could be now going 3 five o'clock um, and it also remains to be seen what will happen to the Bulls versus Lions game which is scheduled for next week Wednesday I imagine that will also probably kick off at about five o'clock but we'll keep it locked on um, the channel and we'll update you as soon as we hear more about that but moving on to the last weekend of football uh, of rugby some very big performances, particularly by the Cheetahs and the Western Province, and it reflects in the team of the week. Cheetahs, for me, were just the best side by a country mile. So I think, that, I mean, and, and that does reflect in the team itself. I think just the sole Sharks player and the sole Greek was player who do make the team of the week. A couple of players I'd like you to miss out without any further ado. This is who we have gone with for the team of the week. Right, so starting up front, the Cheetahs and the Western Province grounds were particularly dominant. Western Province was probably more dominant than the Cheetahs in that they dominated across the game. Whereas the Cheetahs versus the Sharks scrum battle was actually quite interesting. They had some decent battles, but um, Cheetahs did have the upper hand most of the time. And Bowen Fento was a big part of that. He did get a yellow card, but he scrummed superbly and was very important in trying to get that front foot. Um, but you really, I mean, Stephen Kitzel could just have easily have walked into the side. Um, that front row for the Western Province was immense. They completed um, 29 tackles between the three of them. Bongi Ivanami and Francois Herbert contributing nine tackles each. And the entire front row just missed one tackle the entire um, match. So Bongi Ivanami and Francois Herbert getting there alongside Bowen Fenton, what was a very strong front row. For the locks, Carl Bechner probably unlucky to miss out, but I just thought that Aston Fortain was such a hard worker in a losing cause. Made 11 tackles, didn't miss a tackle. Um, you know, took um, one, 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 his, uh, one his line outs when he needed to, didn't give away any penalties. He was just fairly solid. And, and in the team, which was, was pretty poor, I thought he was quite a shine light, especially given the fact that he is quite inexperienced. And he, for me, goes next to J.D. Schickeling, who made a whopping 14 tackles, missing none and winning two turnovers. So a brilliant performance by the province lock. We've got quite a lot of depth at Rock. I mean, at the moment, you, you still got some Murat coming in, as well as David Mayerhaisen, the very talented youngster. So you're looking at Murat and Mayerhaisen as sort of your long-term future. But J.D. Schicklin still offering a lot for the Western Province at the moment. And Disa and Sila, Yaku could see her both make the side despite playing um, at number six because they were both just tremendous, to be honest. Um, Yaku I mean, Yaku could see her made 12 tackles, um, won two turnovers, um, made made 10 meters, carried the ball up quite a few times. He was very, very impressive. But equally impressive was Andisa Ancilo, who made quite a few tackles. I think he topped the tackle charts with 15 missing just one. He was everywhere. He was a big ball carrier for the Cheetahs. He's always quite reliable, loves to be in the thick of things. He really enjoys the contest, you can see. He loves the physical aspect of it. He loves getting into the face of opposition, and he's a vital part of the Cheetahs side, as is jean Rudolf. Rudolph. And, I mean, to be fair, I thought, once again, John Augustus was also particularly, um, was pretty impressive. He made 13 tackles. But John Rudolph, for me, had a bigger impact on the Cheetahs game. You know, won quite a few turnovers. I think it was three, in fact. Made 14 tackles. Um, and was, he's just become so important for And And, and you think that Open Hodge is finally back from injuries. Maybe not playing at his best, but he is back. And there's still Junior Pocamela to come back as well. It's a very strong, loose trio that is starting to sort of gel a little bit with the Cheetahs. Ruben De Haas, second week, he gets in. I was very impressed with him. Um, not to say that Hershey Yankees was bad, and Zach Berger was very good for, for the Greeks, as he always is, but I just thought Ruben De Haas, you know, he's, I tell you, he's, he's playing some very, very nice rugby. And with um, Ruan Pina still out at the moment, Tian May, Ruben De Haas are pushing each other quite nicely at the moment. Tim Sreel gets in ahead of Renner Fortain, who was quite impressive on defense, but didn't seem to do much on the attack and wasn't you know, probably as big of a, of, of a factor to the win as, did, as was Tim Sweel, who kicked uh, a total of nine points 
um, throughout the match and was very competent there. For the wings, it was quite difficult for me to leave out Yao Penke, who I thought worked hard. He looked for work, um, came inside a lot, um, had some very good defensive um, contributions, but he did miss two tackles and made three. So I think that's probably what lets him down in the end, whereas Edwin Cater, for me, is someone that always manages to find work. Um, they, he got a try as did Yao Penke, but you know, made the most tackles out of the Greek, whereas um, he, he plays very well, and, he's always, and, he, and he, he often comes off his wing to try and get more involved. And I think he gets quite frustrated that because the Greek was sometimes struggle to dominate games, he doesn't get as much involvement. Well, when he, he's asked to do something, he's always there and he always delivers for the Greek. Because Rainer Smith, the other one, came off the bench and was very impressive. I mean, after losing William Small Smith so early, um, Rainer Smith came on, should have had a brace. Um, and just played, I mean, he was brilliant. And he, he always looked exciting when, when, he, when he had the ball. He should have had two tries, except the, the trial drifted forward. Uh, he beat three defenders, had made two clean line breaks. His offload was quite good. He was just very, very impressive. And I think it'll be quite easy for them just to keep him there for next weekend. France Dane was immense for the Cheetahs. He kicked very well for the Poles, was very physical in his defense. He made a total of eight tackles, won two turnovers as well. And he is partnering in the team of the week with Dan Duplessy, who made 77 running meters in five carries, um, beating five defenders, and making two clean breaks alongside that. He also didn't do much on the defense, but was just very, um, yeah, he's just very vocal. I'm very present on the attack. And he's somebody who's sort of been a bit in and around, hasn't quite managed to solidify a spot. You know, Ruan Nell is giving him a lot of competition. Um, but they are back in the youngster at this stage. And this weekend, you sort of start to see why, because he did play a lot better. And Clayton Blomicki is always so, so dangerous on the counter-attack for um, the Cheetahs. And he, I mean, since coming back from, from Europe after moving um, during the Pro 14, he's gone back to his best. You know, he's an exciting runner. He, he always looks for gaps. He's a very good counter-attacking fullback. And to be brutally honest, Monty Lewak looked pretty good before he went off. But since then, Apelili Fassi struggled. Um, so did James Verity, Amon Davis, there was nothing special. So Clayton Blomikis, whilst it might not have been a standout game for him, was very, very solid and was probably much better than the other fullbacks around. So let me know what you thought of that team right there. Um, smash like on the video, subscribe to the channel. I want to know what you think you would change. Any players that stood up for you that I haven't mentioned, let me know down below. We will be doing five things that we learned from the weekend tomorrow, so make sure you keep it locked on Forever Sports. My name is Steven, and I'll chat to you soon.